meter, changing the game. Energy information you can act on. Ladies and gentlemen, President and CEO of eMeter Software, Gary Bloom. Good morning. Welcome to San Francisco. We brought the weather with us yet again today. I know some of you are in town for the weekend and some of you were in town yesterday. Um, we don't always get weather quite like this in San Francisco, but it's, it's certainly nice to have this kind of weather. Um, our leadership conference here, uh, great attendance. Thank you all for coming. Um, there's about 250 people that are signed up for the conference in here, representing 80 different companies from 17 different countries. So 17 countries represented here. That's pretty cool. Um, for us, you know, we really do think about our business as being completely global. So we're not surprised by the notion that there's people from all over the world. You'll see some slides later just showing kind of how widespread we've become. And we're thrilled to have you here. This is an opportunity for you to learn, for you to share ideas, and hopefully for you to all network. The one thing I've come to realize with the eMeter customer base, and actually in the utility industry more generally, is everybody talks to everybody. Since it's not the competitive landscape that you see in, say, financial services, where I can assure you Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan, they do not share ideas. They do not exchange best practices. Um, if anything, they do the alternative. They'll tell somebody something works when it doesn't work, um, just to help their competitive position. And in our particular market, uh, we actually have a, a nice scenario here with all of you where we can freely exchange ideas, we can talk about what's happening in the market, we can talk about what's happening in different customers. And I want to encourage everybody here today, take advantage of that opportunity to really network. It should be a great conference. Um, I'm thrilled to see what the agenda looks like. So when we think about um, what's happening in the smart grid, there's been some kind of interesting backlash around deployments. Uh, lots of really negative headlines. Um, I happen to be a customer of our local utility. Uh, the local utility is PG&E. And I, I generally, in, in public forums, and generally speaking, I don't really pick on them, but I like to share stories about them at the same time because I think they've become kind of the, the symbol in the marketplace of what, what can actually go wrong and how far it can go if the smart grid's not done correctly. Um, there's actually been headlines in the, in the newspaper recently locally about you know, three grandmothers up in Marin County that laid in front of the truck and were arrested uh, for blocking the truck trying to deliver smart meters to the installation contractor. There was a picture over, taken over in Berkeley that was in the newspapers. It shows a big wall of smart meters on the side of a building and a bunch of bushes in it. And that sign says before smart meters, and they have the after smart meters picture, and the bushes are all dead. And you know, somehow smart meters killed all the bushes. Um, th there was another, f another great article I just loved, which was the lady that was quoted in a headline article in the local news that said, you know, my dog got sick, I wrapped my meter in aluminum foil, and my dog got better. <laughs> now, now, you don't get there all on your own. You get there because you haven't really thought about the customer. You haven't thought about how you're going to engage with your customer. You haven't really thought about what the smart grid can do. And in many cases, you're also not taking advantage of the operational efficiencies and the capability of what the smart grid can offer. I had a, a very funny personal situation, which is around Thanksgiving, we started having power outages at our home. And my wife calls me at work and she says, you know, the power goes out like three times a day between four and seven. And I'm thinking, well, that's a little weird. It's always four to seven, probably something to do with our backup generator, the switching gear on it failing or something. And so the, the second day since Thanksgiving's coming up, we're gonna have gas, she says, well, can you actually call PG&E and see if they can come out and take care of it? And I called them up and the customer service rep, very nice lady, uh, very professional, and she says, well, what other houses are out? And I said, well, we have smart meters, surely you must know that. And her response is, well, we don't have access to any of that data. Uh, and I thought, okay, it's different. It's a smart grid, not, not too smart yet. And so then she said, but I'll have the line guy call you and he can talk to you. Line guy calls me up and he says, um, well, Gary, you, you really need to have, um, to tell us which other houses are out. Same thing again, how can we isolate the problem if we don't know whether it's only your house or there's other houses? 
And I said, well, you, we have a smart meter. Surely you must know what other houses are out. He says, no, 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 we don't have access to any of that data. And he says, but the next time it goes out, can you run outside and can you look around and figure out which other houses are out? <laughs> and then he proceeds to give me the story that says, you have to understand how electricity flows. And he says, when you, when you have a short on the line from a tree limb or a squirrel, and he said, in your neighborhood, there's a lot of squirrels. He said, what ends up happening is it shorts, so it shuts off, and then immediately resets, and it does it three times, and the third time, if it stays down, then they can go isolate the problem. But in the intermittent problem where the squirrel is causing this problem, it's really difficult because it has to reset three times and it usually you know, moves on. And I'm like, well, in my case, I've had nine power outages. It must be the, cat, the squirrel with nine lives. Because my guess is if a squirrel took that much voltage, it would probably not be a very healthy squirrel anymore. Um, although I did get corrected by one of my customers to say it could be that the tail is flying around and hitting the line. So I'm sure somewhere in there, there's a smart grid. Um, the next day, by the way, I, I went outside, I went to leave to work, and up and down our street were no less than probably six or seven PG&E trucks with supervisors, and they're all walking around looking up at the lines. So as I'm driving down the street, I'm looking at the lines too, and the only thing I noticed was our transformer looked really old. Uh, three days later, we got a letter in the mail saying that they're gonna replace our transformer. And so it turned out it was our house and three others. But it, it's, it's kind of an indication of where you put in this infrastructure, you put billions of dollars of cost in, all good intentions, but you're really not taking advantage of what you have. And fundamental to that is you have to have really good information in order to take advantage of it. The other thing, that just to take away from it, and they're not the only ones, there's other headlines up here. You know, we saw back in Baltimore, the whole entire holdup on the smart grid project is all of you in the room ultimately kind of pay the price for what has happened in some of these difficult projects where things didn't go the way they should have gone for whatever reason. And that's that you end up having to do trials, you end up doing pilots, you have to do much bigger case studies. Very often you have to go back to the utility commissions multiple times, or if you get over into the European market, you end up with a scenario that says, hey, we're gonna tell you what you're going to do. They're not allowing the utilities really come to the commission and say, let me tell you what we'd like to do. They're actually setting policy that's regulating what will be done around the smart grid. So there are lots of backlash from consumers, backlash from the political environment, and certainly um, here locally when you get these crazy articles that are completely silly, there's obviously backlash from the press, and that can be incredibly damaging to anybody's business. At the same time, while there's challenges, there's a tremendous number of successes out there. And I like to think that behind all these successes out there, and certainly behind many of these headlines, if not all of them, amazing how we pick those, is e-meter. Um, you know, we, we're, we're actually getting the scalability, we're getting the results, we're, we're leading down the, the path of, in Weststar's case, where the customers actually have data, they're gonna have historical data, they're gonna be out there doing proper engagement.